Woohoo! We're at the top, finally. Good morning. We are on our way to our extremely exciting day trip today. We are starting by going to the Ryla Seven Lakes hike. Uh, we'll be doing a chairlift there, and then we'll be heading on to Ryla Monastery. It's kind of a hard transit between the two, especially to do it all in one day. So. Uh, we paid about $45 a person to have somebody drive us, which isn't bad at all. We have a ton of food in our backpack and we are at the cathedral, which is the meeting point and we're ready to go. got to the chairlift and from here we'll go up to the starting point for the hike to the lakes. It's a very windy road up here so bring your Dramamine or your ginger. I was definitely feeling it. We got two round trip chairlift tickets. It was 20 lev per person which is about $12. And we have some really nice weather today right now. It's about 22 degrees Celsius and right behind us here you can actually see the hike we're getting ready to do and actually has got it on our all trails. into this chairlift, literally. Very relaxing, it's nice and slow. Um, you have a nice bar in front of you so that you don't flop out. You can hike to the base of the hike. It is two hours one way if you wanna hike up and it's pretty dang steep, so. We recommend the chairlift. <laughs> I think it'll be a great after hike as well. Oh yeah, this is the best way to get down too. <laughs> this is the Seven Lakes of Rila, and this area just has some really awesome views of the lakes, um, especially from above, so that's why it takes a little bit of hiking to get to the top. Whoa. <laughs> it stopped all of a sudden. <laughs> I was just recording us just sitting here. And then, oh, now we're bouncing. <laughs> There's something on my shirt. <laughs> this is not the place to bring out. <laughs> I've made it about 15 minutes of the chairlift. Mr. B, That's go B. away. <laughs> We're almost there, but it's gotten kind of chilly. Like we can see some snow up here and I'm cold. Yeah, we've definitely gone up in some elevation and so the temperature's starting to kind of change a lot. Yeah. A little bit of wind too. Just make sure that you bring a jacket on this hike because you are going up the mountain. hike starts out pretty much uphill for the first half mile or so. So we are just climbing straight up right now. It's like stair steps made out of rocks. It's really not too bad. Once we get to the top of this plateau, it's kind of flat for about a mile or so, I think. And then we'll climb up again. But the first, it starts out very strong. Like you start out strong. <laughs> a little more level now it's not so much inclined getting some views of the lakes finally seeing uh, what we're hiking for we can see three of the lake that one that one that one and I would tell you what they're named but on all trails they're all written in acrylic and I don't know how to pronounce that at all what a great first lake view this is beautiful We 
have made it right up to the first lake that we're crossing. The water is so beautiful. It's turquoise. <laughs> Elevation. <laughs> the water's really turquoise and blue. It's beautiful. It's a really big lake, actually. It's a lot bigger than I was picturing. But we're gonna have a few snacks before we get to the top and eat our actual food that we brought. Nice cold water. I think I should build a chairlift from here all the way up there, which is where we're going. Yep, we're going right there, guys. We're about to start the climb up from here. This is just straight up for the next 0.7 miles. We're like 200 steps away. We're almost there. This one is a climb. Like it just climb after climb after climb. We're at the top, finally. It's definitely worth it. This is beautiful up here. Yeah, you have like an overview of all seven lakes. We're gonna go down there and get some pics and eat some lunch, so. And then run back down. And sprint back down, because we have to be back down by three and it's 12 o'clock. We are like on the edge of the cliff here, looking down on the lakes. Um, it's a really nice view. It's so windy up here still, of course. Sorry if you can't hear us. It feels really good to get to the top finally and see what we've been looking forward to. We read a lot about this hike um, and everybody recommended it from Bulgaria, so. You guys can see very well, but we started all the way down there, and now we have to hike all the way back down there, and all the way back down. for the first time since coming down. We were all the way up there. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe we made it all the way up. And we've gotten this far down in like 20 minutes. It's taking so much less time. Sorry, I was helping out the, that man. He's like, what is that way? And I said, there's more lakes. He goes, oh my, more lakes. I said, yes, there's seven. He goes, seven? I was like, that is the name of the hike. We just finished the hike. Um, made our long trek down. The knees are feeling it, the ankles are feeling it, toes. the feet are feeling it, the toes are feeling it. We just got down to what looks like a little hotel with some food, hopefully a restroom. I mean, good hike. We did like five miles in total, 2,000 feet of elevation gain. Our sandwiches are still in our bag, so we're going to eat those now. We just wanted to make sure that we were going to be down in time. Exactly. Headed back on the chairlift to go down, and we're gonna eat lunch down there just so we for sure make it all the way to our shuttle on time. Okay. They like grab you and make sure you get on this uh, chairlift. There's no missing lift. Eat it off. We're heading to the monastery next. 
um, we'll hop back in our shuttle and it's about a one and a half hour drive there. It's a nice ride down, very soothing. You get a chance for your muscles to recuperate. But now we are heading back to our van to head to the monastery. We paid about $45 a person to have transport to both of these places. It's nice to not have to worry about driving in Bulgaria. Yes, you will quickly figure out driving in Romania or Bulgaria can be quite, uh, stressful. quite stressful. Made it to the monastery. This is a working monastery in Rila. It's been restored so that it's basically in perfect condition almost it looks like. There's residential areas for the monks that do live here. There is a beautiful church in the center and there's a little museum on site but we only have about an hour here to walk around but it should be plenty to just absorb how beautiful this place is. It's set in the mountains so it's, it's gorgeous. It did close at 4.30, which our shuttle person said that we'd be able to go in, so I don't know if they would have stayed open a little bit later for us or not, but check that out if you come here. I've heard it's really worth it. There's lots and lots of fountains around the area. The water is cold and crisp and delicious. You'll see a lot of the monks walk up and drink or use these little ladles. It's available for you to drink out of, so bring your water bottles. This little bakery it's kind of through the monastery area but they have these traditional breakfast pastries these are called maketskis right Miketsi. maketskis they're just fried dough that you put powdered sugar on they have a little communal powdered sugar out here that everyone kind of just sprinkles their uh, maketsi with coat and then powdered sugar mm. Mm, it's all over my pants. <laughs> it's not as fried as it looks. Like, it's more doughy in the center than I was expecting. It's really good. And then we also got some lemonades. They have a bunch of lemonade flavors. We got elderberry. It has like a herbaly, lemony flavor almost. It's very good as well. So make sure you come check out this little bakery back here. This little stone bakery. This monastery, in a way, dates back to the 1800s because the venerable Ion Rilski became a Christian in the 800s, determined that the Urila Mountains were one of God, and he spent a lot of his time practicing up here. Eventually, a monastery was built up here, basically in dedication to God and to him. So that's a little bit about why this is here. Most of these buildings have markings from the 1800s on them, like 1860s, 1870s. They don't have really in any information about when it was built out here. I think that's probably in the museum that we miss. It's just a gorgeous monastery. Like all of the detail, the stripes add so much. The setting is beautiful. So the frescoes all around the church are just telling a story of Jesus Christ, basically the Bible. Really pretty, um, definitely took some time to do this. It's very colorful. You can also tell that this is newer by how bright and vibrant all of the frescoes are. 
it really plays out a lot of the stories of the Bible. It's really beautiful. I think the church has something similar inside. You can't record or take photos, so we will tell you if it does. There's a lot more frescoes inside. You obviously can't see the colors vibrantly because there's no, not a lot of lighting. It's a big, huge, beautiful golden chandelier. I think the main reason you can't record inside is because they're practicing, and so you don't want to be like intruding in their space. Actually, we're getting ready to head back to our tour bus to head back to Sophia. Should be about an hour and a half or so. comment leaving this place if you are a woman you do need to have your shoulders and knees covered so I had my hiking tank top on but I've just worn my jacket the entire time we've been in here and luckily it's been relatively cool but just keep that in mind you can bring a little scarf too if it's a hot day just got dropped back off at our stop that we got on this morning. Look how beautiful this cathedral is in every single lighting. We are enamored by it, honestly. It's awesome. Tomorrow we are living for Italy. Carbonara, margarita pizza, and gelato. And Ryanair. <laughs> <laughs> 